blackface has been part of the American culture for almost 200 years. The practice, developed by minstrel performers in the 1820s, involves darkening the face with burnt cork, shoe polish, or black paint in order to impersonate a black person, often in a very exaggerated way. While blackface was most commonly featured in the 1800s as part of minstrel shows, it is still seen across the country today, especially on college campuses. Mixed reactions to the use of blackface have turned it into a nationwide controversy. Though the exact origins of blackfacing are unknown, documentation of its use and performances dates back to the late 1820s in New York City. Actor Thomas Rice premiered the technique in 1828 when he covered his face in a layer of cork, danced, and spoke in a plantation dialect in a rendition of an African-American routine he called Jump Jim Crow. His performance was unprecedented in the world of musical theater and met immediate success. The New York Tribune later reported, Nothing was talked about, nothing wrote about, nothing dreamed about but Jim Crow. The comedic act quickly became popular among working-class Americans and led to the creation of troops dedicated solely to the performance of blackface minstrelsy. Over the course of several decades, the style of minstrel performances began to evolve. Producers began adding new components to the shows, including the onstage band in blackface that played live music while occasionally adding in commentary or jokes. However, the central minstrel characters evolved in a much different way. While originally depicting fictional comedic stories, the routines came to include dramatically exaggerated characters. These included Jim Crow, a goofy runaway slave, Zip Coon, a freedman who put on airs and acted above himself, and Brother Tambo and Brother Bones, the always bickering tambourine and bones players in the band. Skits usually caricatured these players as uneducated, lazy, or childish, but some went further, including crude jokes and deliberately offensive language. In this clip from the 1950 film Yes Sir, Mr. Bones, performers Cotton and Chick Watts demonstrate some common depictions. Well, why don't you get a job and go to work? No, you had me a job this morning. Where? I went down to the post office and said that man couldn't let me have one of them jobs as a letter total. No, Cotton, you mean a mail carrier. I mean the mail as the minstrel shows gained popularity, many people started to believe that the stereotypes represented by onstage characters were truthful representations of black people. Mel Watkins, an African-American author, wrote that the performances were not advertised as a stage show, but as a peephole view into what black people were really like. The result was a less than flattering popular opinion of African-Americans that some think prolonged the age of discrimination in the United States. In addition to the stereotyping, many of the laws that maintained segregation were nicknamed after the caricatured minstrel character, Jim Crow. The cultural views created through the minstrel shows pervaded American society for over a century. Eventually, though, the minstrel show faded away. Vaudeville performances, which grew out of minstrel shows, started attracting larger audiences, and the freeing of the slaves and later movements for racial equality led to criticisms of the minstrel shows as racist. In modern years, blackface minstrelsy has faded into an almost taboo piece of the past, a symbol of the years of black slavery and discrimination that many people would like to forget. Today, the use of blackface is a national controversy with largely negative connotations. Though incidents of blackfacing are infrequent, new examples appear every year, both in schools and as part of costumes representing black celebrities or stereotypes. While many Americans are ignorant of the continued use of blackface, those who are aware of the controversy are divided on its morality and use. Some dismiss blackfacing incidents as innocent fun, but many criticize its use, regardless of context, because of inherently racist connotations. A surprising portion of blackface incidents around the country occur in K-12 public schools. In just this past year, three incidents in Colorado, Texas, and New York State made headlines. In Colorado Springs, Sean King, a second grader, entered the national spotlight when he dressed as Martin Luther King for a school project, complete with dark face paint. 
Sean and his family asked for an apology from the school after he was taken out of class. They thought it was inappropriate and it would be disrespectful to black people. But I say that it's not. I like black people. I don't want to... The story met with mixed reactions. A comment from the Huffington Post's coverage read, Ignorance is not an excuse to allow a child to paint his face. Another reader wrote, He was being as authentic to his character as possible. A similar incident occurred when students at New Hope Elementary School in Texas were asked to dress up as their hero, and one boy came to school wearing blackface imitating Barack Obama. There is a negative connotation associated with uh, whites with black faces. Someone at school should have exercised, I think, better judgment in pointing out to uh, the young man's parents. More inflammatory examples of blackface emerge around the country every year as Halloween or theme costumes. On Halloween weekend 2012, Tyler Bozak, an NHL hockey player, tweeted a picture of himself dressed as Michael Jackson for Halloween. The Twitter response was passionate and mixed, with some fans condemning the costume as racially insensitive, and others defending the costume as a non-caricatured homage to the King of Pop. Incidents at college fraternities are even more provocative. In 2001, members of the Alpha Tau Omega fraternity at Ole Miss dressed as a slave picking cotton and a police officer with a gun to his head. That same year, members of Auburn University's Delta Sigma Pi chapter posted a picture of a student in blackface with a noose around his neck, held by someone dressed as a member of the KKK. 2009 saw pictures of a student at a Northwestern frat's Halloween party dressed as one of the Williams sisters. And this past year, Beta Theta Pi students at the University of Florida attended a gangsta-style theme party. Heated controversy surrounding these incidents has left officials in a difficult position. Blackfacing is legal in the United States and protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution because it is a form of free expression. As such, any laws prohibiting blackfacing are unconstitutional. The only exceptions to free speech protection are libel, incitement to riot, or fighting words, and even when speech encourages violence, it only qualifies as criminal if the threat is imminent. Blackfacing alone also fails to qualify as a hate crime, though a crime perpetrated in blackface will receive a more severe penalty. While the law cannot prevent blackfacing, Schools, organizations, and public officials do have the right to punish certain blackfacing incidents. In 1998, two firefighters and a police officer were fired for wearing blackface during a Labor Day parade in Queens. Their case made it to a federal appeals court in 2006, which upheld that the city had acted within its rights, since one's right to be a police officer or firefighter who publicly ridicules those he is commissioned to protect and serve is far from absolute. In universities, Fraternities responsible for blackfacing incidents have been suspended for disrupting the learning environment, though no legal actions could be taken against individuals. For example, in 2011, members of Phi Mu at the University of Southern Mississippi were put on probation from the organization after dressing up as members of the Huxtable family from The Cosby Show. Dr. Eddie Holloway, the Dean of Students at USM, said, Though it is clear that these women had no ill intent, it was also clear that they had little cultural awareness or competency, and did not understand the historical implication of costuming in blackface. Many other schools have dealt with incidents of blackfacing, and Penn State is no exception. University President Rodney Erickson wrote an open letter on December 6, 2012, expressing concerns with the year's Halloween costumes. He wrote, Costumes that include blackface are always offensive to some. In response to costumes incorporating blackface at Northwestern, the Northwestern Dean wrote a letter to all students on October 26th, stating, In many cases, the student wearing the costume has not intended to offend, but their actions or lack of forethought have sent a far greater message than any apology could after the fact. There is no simple resolution to the blackface controversy. Because the use of blackface is protected under the First Amendment, laws cannot provide a solution. In the foreseeable future, the practice will continue as long as it is not a criminal offense and people don't know or don't care about its offensive nature. Only when our society stops focusing on skin color as a differentiating factor can the blackfacing issue be put to rest. <laughs>